All right, you guys. So I have questions all the time. I get people emailing me and messaging me on uh, YouTube and different places saying, why are you guys selling your Cabri? Why is it up for sale? I look on controller, I can see it's up for sale. And that's a really good question. Uh, why are we selling our Cabri? Because we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody thinks. That's exactly. the crazy thing. Um, that is 100% untrue. So we absolutely love the Cabri. And uh, the reason that it's for sale is because how long ago? Um, eight months ago, about eight months ago, uh, we got designated by Gimbal Helicopters as the Canadian dealer, uh, technically Western Canada, but yeah. at the moment there's no others, so we're, uh, we're all of Canada at the moment. And um, so we're the dealership for, uh, for Gimbal Helicopters. And um, so if we look at the business model that we used to run with BC Helicopters, we were the distributor for the Schweitzer Helicopters. And over a span of about eight years, um, BC Helicopters sold, I think, 26 Schweitzers. And um, so what we're trying to get out there is the message that we really love the Cabri and we're trying to provide a economic solution. We're trying to provide as many options, I guess you'd say, yeah. Um, to the the Canadian industry as possible, so uh, we can sell a new Schweitzer or a new a new Cabri, sorry, um, and we can sell a used one, and that's the thing. We're gonna have a full range. Uh, right now, we have two of them. Eventually, we're gonna have three of them in stock, and um, so our goal is to be able to always have three in stock with different amounts of hours on them, so they're gonna have different prices, um, and then the option to to sell a brand new one as well. And so what we're trying to do is. I think our goal over the next 10 years is to flood the Canadian helicopter market, the training market for sure, and then the private market as well, um, with Cabris. I'd like to see all our 22s replaced. That's, mm -hmm. That would be my dream. Um, and then any other training helicopter that people are using. Um, there's so many people nowadays that are going to the Robinson R44 as a primary trainer. There's no need for that. It's, it's too much of a helicopter. For, for learning how to fly. And when I say too much of a helicopter, I mean, it's just too much money. Um, there's no reason that you need to be spending almost double the price on a training helicopter when you're just learning how to fly. And um, being in the safest possible helicopter you can be while you're training, um, that's for us as a training school is the number one thing. Um, so as a, a Canadian dealer, we wanna sort of have the same thing as well. We wanna make sure there's a me as many people out there with the opportunity to be able to buy these things as possible. Yeah, I think the whole Fraser Valley or each school in Canada or all around the world mm -hmm. should do a step towards the future yeah. and towards a safe aircraft. And I think it's not just for us as a flight training unit, it's also for the whole uh, reputation of the helicopter industry. If you go with a safer aircraft, with later technologies than the other, I think that just can affect everyone uh, mm -hmm. positively. No innovation out there whatsoever, other than what we're seeing with Gimbal. And, uh, and that was, for us, such a breath of fresh air is, is seeing a manufacturer say, okay, we're in the 21st century, let's design a helicopter for the 21st century. Like, the crash-worthy seats in this helicopter are safer than an EC-120. Like, that just blows my mind. You know, you can get a, a $1.8 million helicopter that doesn't even have as safe of crash-worthy seats as this helicopter. This just blows my mind. Um, you know, and the, uh, the technology on the rotor head with the elastomeric uh, lead leg and flapping dampers and everything, um, you know, that, that's, that's innovation. That's what all the ma new manufacturers, Airbus and Bell and so forth, are, are doing with their new really expensive helicopters. And then that's not even talking about the avionics on the inside and how that avionics system is, is the glass cockpit and really getting um, pilots ready for a, a glass cockpit world because everything is now um, developing so quickly in, in mm. the larger part of the industry. Um, so I think training people for the future while having the safest helicopter out there is really, really important. So why are we selling our, our Cabri? Um, because when we get one in stock, it's gonna immediately go up for sale. Uh, we love it, we're not getting rid of them. Um, we're gonna have three of them always for sale eventually and uh, so you can buy new, used, whatever. So this isn't the sales pitch uh, to anybody to buy a Cabri from us, uh, but our, our goal, I think, is to be able to 
bring this safe helicopter to the Canadian market. I think that's what we're after. Yeah, it was so. funny to see at HAI how <laughs> the big players all focus on safety, mm -hmm. on innovation, on getting glass cockpits running, mm -hmm. improving uh, the workload for the pilots. And yeah. there is no competitor other than Gimbal out there which actually takes care on all that stuff in a two-seater. Yeah. And I think it's the only, the only really competitive player on the market in that two-seater world yeah. which takes care on a development yeah that and that's place. that's kind of where it blows my mind where somebody will actually look at the cabri and say ah, it's it's awesome but uh it's just so expensive and it's like if you look at the price difference between an r22 and a cabri it, it's like the it's it's marginally different like the cabri obviously is going to be more expensive right but when you look at the innovation and technology and, and safety that you're getting in that helicopter it just it, it blows my mind that people would even ask that and say you know no it's too expensive i, I don't think i can afford it kind of thing so um you know it's the question is can you afford your safety it's an extra maybe 60 grand or something like that amortize that over the amount of time that you're going to have the helicopter and it's going to definitely pay off so yeah and that's yeah. it most <clears throat> of the things on this ship are um, due on condition so mm -hmm. you inspect it before you replace it they're not time limited a f yeah. a well a few are mm -hmm. but if you go on a long run after you hit your first 2200 hour inspection your price drops dramatically compared with other ships in the same scale yeah. and I think if you see the whole range on it you have no other option than than go for a cabri that's why we probably stick on it yeah and then exactly. all the stories you hear about no power and weak fenestron and that <laughs> thing doesn't really work and no authority and all that stuff everyone who thinks it is like this should just yeah. do one test flight yeah exactly yeah i mean we've been playing around uh simon and i are working on some advanced training right now and um, I mean, we just landed this thing at the base here of Robbie. We're at, uh, I don't know, 4,800 feet or something like that. And we've been dancing around the mountains five, six, seven thousand feet and, and playing with the power limits. And that's, that's the other thing too, is, you know, people, we talked so, to so many people at HAI about this. They were saying, oh, I don't know, it seems like it's a little bit underpowered and stuff like that. And it's like, it's a training helicopter. You don't want it to be able to take two people and three hours worth of fuel and go land at 10,000 feet. There's no use in that, you know, and that's where training in a Robinson R44 or a Jet Ranger or something like that, what's the purpose? Because you're not gonna get into a mountain situation with two people on board where that thing's gonna tap out on power. And you need to be able to teach them to fly a jet ranger with five people on board and you know a good amount of fuel and where you're going to be torquing out and temping out and stuff like that right so that's where the cabri we can we can play in our backyard here anywhere from sea level up to like six thousand feet and uh, and we just have perfect opportunity to show our students like this is the limit this is this is where it maxes out this is how to operate safely within that limit this is how to not to push that limit and um, so I don't know I think it's just I think it's fantastic yeah so Anyways, enough sales pitch. I hope you guys like this video. If uh, if anybody's been asking you, hey, why is BC Helicopter selling their Cabri? Uh, share this video with them. Uh, give it a thumbs up, and we will talk to you guys again later.